What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's Fish Tanks bringing it to you on a Greenhouse Soccer Sunday. Soccer continues. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In uh, last week's video, I showed you my part of my case when applying for this conditional use. I got to speak for 10 minutes, and then here comes part two of the hearing where one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 people showed up in opposition of me getting approved for conditional use for this greenhouse. This video was hard to go through and edit, and this is actually over almost two hours worth of footage edited down for 25 minutes, so you are getting the highlights of it as well as some of my commentary throughout. Do me a favor if you like this video, drop me a comment on what you think, uh, whatever, about how this is all going down for Dusty. Enjoy. Uh, we have over 300 paid members in our association and many others who are unpaid but we associate with and uh, communicate with um, frequently. I'm sorry, everything around this proposed business is zoned AR, including this property and is agricultural or residential in nature. The goal of this area is to keep things compatible with the AR zone <coughs> and single-family dwellings in this structure and business request are not compatible with this area. The intent of Article 18 of the Zoning Ordinance is, quote, to improve the appearance of the vehicular use areas and property abutting public rights of way and to protect, preserve, and promote the aesthetic appeal, character, and value of the surrounding neighborhoods. This site is in the area of over 3,400 acres of PDR and bluegrass conservation land. So we're trying to promote that in our area. It borders the Boone Creek National Historic District. It is on a designated scenic highway, byway, highway, that we are trying to make scenic, as you can tell. I'm down here a lot. With regard to this, it's on the Kiwanis Bluegrass Driving Tour. It is in the notification area of two other scenic byways, McCall's Mill Road and Grimes Mill Road. So we want to applaud the staff for recommending additional screening, and it looks like Dustin is working with that, beyond uh, what was recommended by the zoning ordinance, but we further request that no trees be removed. We want overkill on landscaping and screening, and as you know from previous hearings, this structure, which was built without a permit and has been out of compliance and with um, most of the conditions of a commercial greenhouse, and does not meet the agricultural use requirements, which requires it to be on five acres. The structure sticks out like a sore thumb in the neighborhood. It's a blight on the world landscape. There are six conditions that must be met to have a commercial greenhouse, and this site will never, ever be able to comply with all six of them. To allow mature trees to be removed would be 180 degrees from what the, um, the code is, the, thing that I read earlier, this, uh, to preserve the aesthetic appeal, character, and value of the surrounding neighborhoods. Dustin clearly states and dem demonstrates in his YouTube blogs that he uses 48-inch LED lights and says he can grow anything with these on his YouTube blogs and goes to great lengths to make that point. So we certainly hope cutting down the trees will not be uh, something that he is allowed to do. Article 8.1, number 5, requires a performance bond or the developer must post a letter of credit with the Division of Environmental Services to ensure the completion of the screening. Although we prefer this building be removed and the site post a single family dwelling, we certainly think major screening and no tree removal is a necessity. Overall, the structure and this business are not compatible with the surrounding area, and this dilapidated structure has had negative impact on the area for the past 12 years. Under the tenure of an absentee owner, he never bothered to comply with the conditions he was to follow starting in 2006. We request you deny this conditional use permit, and here are my notes to put into the KSR Lexington Statutes Agricultural Use. They list horticulture, they list agriculture. Is this aquaponics? It's not really listed. Is this a commercial facility? Yes, it is an online business. Yes, they won't have that much traffic. At the same time, it is a, another commercial use 
in an ag zone area that we aren't even sure is compliant with local and or state statutes unless, unless you get better definitions there. Second point, current business plan that he has, he talks about water changes two days a week. Is there a septic system on this property? Where's this water going? Is it a runoff? That's, that's a serious question. You're sitting in the Boone Creek watershed right next to the Kentucky River, serving on the Green Space Commission. I'm very well aware of the EPA issues surrounding Lexington and runoff. Now, this isn't normal runoff. Yeah, it is enhanced for the growth of the plant. Fertilize what's in there. That's one of the things that EPA doesn't particularly like in runoff. Um, this is, and I quote, we would also like to make note of the fact that we take personal offense that the planning staff recommended to the BLA in the report that because the property has been is between Old Richmond Road and I-75, that it does not make for a desirable residential <coughs> use. Um, we obviously find our small property to be a very desirable place to live. We would have not continued to live here for all of these years. Um, he said that these homes have only been here for a certain amount of years. John and Kathy have had their home for 18 years. So this has been built since they have been there. <coughs> we have other neighbors on small lots in the area who feel exactly as we do, and that it is good for residential living, and this house should have, and a house should have been built on the greenhouse lot instead of that of where it is. This should not be any different than the homes backing up to Man of War. The approval for this conditional use recommendation by the staff states because this is an undesirable piece of property because it's between both I-75 and Old Richmond Road and because of its odd shape because it is a narrow pizza shape. You couldn't put a house on it that easily. This property on a daily basis and it's in the packet that I have provided to you, the very last thing in the packet. And the neighbor across the street's up. For the property located at 7525 Old Richmond Road. The variance granted in 2006 for the property located at 7525 Old Richmond Road were based on faulty site plan information that was given to the staff and the board. Variances granted in 2006 do not coordinate, do not coordinate with the recorded deed or the recorded plat dimensions for the property. Variances that were granted, granted erroneously or that circumvent the requirements of the zoning regulations are known void and may be revoked by the Board of Adjustment. That's from Zoning Ordinance Article 7. This is my eighth appearance to the Board of Adjustment regarding... Folks, think about this for a second. This is the person who lives across the street. This is their eighth appearance in front of the Board of Adjustments. Eighth appearance. She bought her house in 2011. It's 2018. She has been there once a year, sometimes twice, eight times in front of the Board of Adjustment she has gone to talk about this property. Eight times. Development plan as it is not planned. The 2006, 2015, and 2018 site plans for the property do not match the recorded plat for the property, which is in book 761, page 59. The measurements are incorrect and not to scale. The 2006 plan states a 35 by 185 building. The building drawn on the plan is not square. The ends are not equal length. 35 by 185 feet is larger than the building drawn on the plan. The current plan was based on that 2006 plan that was never approved or correct. Were you able to put that up on the board? Thank you. The easements of record in the county clerk's office that are on the property are not shown on the site plan and never have been. All recorded deeds for this property have been added into the record previously and will be added again today for review. Variances do run with the land, but originally in 2006, these variances were not accurate. Variances formerly granted for the property previously are not adequate for the plan to be approved for the current application. The greenhouse building needed to request more variances in 2006 in order to construct the building on the lot. By definition, the property has two front yards with highway setbacks. No variances were given or requested for the side yard setback or, or the front yard setbacks. The plan also did not include the setbacks from the state right of way in I-75. 
According to Article 8 of the Zoning Ordinance, existing lots less than 350 feet in lot depth shall have the minimum front yard coinciding with the platted building line, or 50 feet, whichever is greater. The property is deemed to have two front yards. The minimum rear yard for the property is 25 feet, as required in the AR zone. The minimum side yard setbacks in the AR zone is 25 feet. Even agricultural buildings are not exempt from the 30-foot highway setbacks, and that's for the protection of existing and proposed streets, zoning article 3-4. The building is well within the required setbacks, regardless of whether it's considered agricultural or residential. The widest part of the property by the deep plat map is 157.47 feet on the south boundary line. There's a utility line easement all along Old River Road frontage with utility poles. An encroachment permit and perhaps a variance would be needed before placing the driveway and parking areas within it. The 50 yard setbacks fall within the building. The building of that size, 135 by 185 feet, cannot fit when surrounded by 20 feet of required landscaping and required parking area behind the 50-foot setbacks on a lot that's only 157 feet on the widest side of the lot. This is something that cannot be corrected now, and it's too late to obtain the variances. <coughs> As stated in the revocation hearing in April 2017 regarding this piece of property, it should have been known that this building could not have been built on this lawn. <coughs> These things can't be changed and the property should not be approved again for a conditional use permit. The building is too big and the lot is too small. Simple math shows the site plan would not work on the lot without a long list of variances. The math for this has been provided on the second page of your packet. Since the required permits were never obtained for the building, drive, parking, and landscaping, it's assumed that no one ever measured to see if they were accurate. <coughs> Commercial greenhouses are allowed in the AR zone, but only when all six conditions are met. A variance was granted um, that allowed for item B that states no structure shall be within 300 feet of any existing residential structure on another lot under different ownership, and driveway shall be 100 feet from property line. I believe two neighboring lots are less than 300 feet, but the original report only notes one property. Second, the original report notes that it will be 242 feet from one residence. And I don't have footage of it, but the guy giving me a quote on the asphalt said, he's got, oh, you got some neighbors out here. Apparently she went over there and was discussing with the guy giving me a quote on some asphalt for the driveway there. She asked him what's the distance between the greenhouse and the road and was over on the property snooping around. Not minding her own business. I don't have footage of her doing this, but I could definitely get the guy from the asphalt company on camera to say that to you all. The requirements of the zoning regulations. The Board of Adjustment has the legal authority to revoke a variance for non-compliance with the condition requirements of the zoning ordinance, Article 7-6. The 2006 variances that do not meet the measurements for the plat for the property should be revoked. The applicant also states that trees are an issue for the greenhouse and asks for variances for the landscaping. Removing any existing trees would change the character of the area. Variances cannot be granted if they change the character of the area or neighborhood. Article 8 of the zoning ordinance states that commercial greenhouses be permitted as a conditional use only when a 20-foot wide landscape easement shall be provided around all buildings and parking areas or at the perimeter of a tract of land containing one tree per 30 feet of length or fraction thereof, plus a continuous six-foot high planting, hedge, fence, wall, or earth mound. The applicant and staff report suggest that not all areas in the drive and parking be paved. The applicant lists three retail businesses as examples. Again, in the AR zone, commercial greenhouses are only allowed when all driveway and parking areas are paved in the <coughs> The zoning ordinance definitions say that if sales to the public are permitted on the premises for a commercial greenhouse, then parking is not required to be paved. The applicant has stated no on-site sales, but the staff report suggests that the parking lot is not required to be paved. These things are inconsistent with the AR zoning requirements for a commercial greenhouse being allowed as part of a farm agriculture use on five contiguous acres. This building is closer to my home and my neighbor's home than it should be and is definitely not conducive to a retail eight to five business 
that is envisioned to continue growing with employees. It has one entrance with a setback at zero onto a state highway and is dangerous for the surrounding residences and anyone entering and exiting the property. The current application states plans to grow the national retail business at this location by adding additional staff. Retail sales or services are prohibited in the AR zone unless included in the definitions in KRS 100.111. Although the applicant states no sales on the property, if five or more employees are engaged in handling purchases and packing and shipping purchases made online from that location each business day, there are indeed retail sales on the property. The 2006 application stated one employee, wholesale only, and set pickup times two times per week. It's important to note that the greenhouse is still owned by Aaron Jameson and Envirosod, who asked for the original conditional use in 2006. He has never appeared before the board, except in 2006. I believe the owner should be made to appear before the Board of Adjustment and give testimony regarding these issues, of which he is fully aware. Why the site plan doesn't match the deed and plat, why the building was abandoned, why it's being marketed without disclosing the facts and problems of the property. The current application will harm surrounding properties and is not consistent with the surrounding area. It could potentially have an environmental impact, but we have not been providing more details in the application about certain waste and water issues, and it will have an Im Im adverse impact and already has on the neighborhood. I'd like to submit all my documents, the findings of facts, and the previous information that I submitted in April 2017, as I believe the um, materials are still relevant to this case today since it's the same piece of property. I would like all those entered into the record. And I would like to state, um, as Lauren talked about, you know, all the properties and uh, her in-law's property um, being there before the greenhouse, most of these properties in this area were there long before the greenhouse. Thank you. For me, the missing piece, the crucial information that the owner or this potential buyer has never provided is the site plan stamped by a licensed surveyor that proves the building is in compliance with all dimensional requirements, setbacks, easements, right-of-ways, and the like. That this building is not in compliance has been voiced repeatedly. I don't see how you can consider approving a conditional use for a structure that was illegally built and might not be able to obtain a legitimate occupancy permit. My objections have not changed. Uh, they're about the same. I gotta say, this guy was actually super nice. We had a break, and he came up to me in the hallway and was like, "I checked out your YouTube channel. I thought it was great. You got new subscribers here." Blah blah blah. So he was actually uh, one of the few people that was super cordial to me and and nice, regardless of what he's testifying here. Particularly if he intended to sell some extra plants to his neighbor. Well, this is not a farmer growing tobacco plants. This is a commercial retail company uh, that supplies fish tank supplies to people who enjoy fish tank hobbies. It doesn't require a farm to do that. He's obviously been doing it in his backyard for some time. Uh, and the, the next slide. Folks, what he's showing here is another property down the street that's out of compliance and how it adversely affects the neighborhood. He's just got pictures of a place down the street. But the fact that adversely affecting the neighborhood comes up again and again and again, I thought it just is worth showing. Uh, this also detracts not just from the neighborhood, but from one of Fayette County's busiest uh, uh, thoroughfares, one of our busiest corridors that we're trying to Unfortunately, with this piece of property, and I want to make it very clear that nobody in this neighborhood is objecting to him personally or has any problem with what his business does or what he likes to do for a living. The real and, and nothing with our staff and in house folks. Um, I've been at this piece of property where I live. We bought in 78 and I've lived in that spot since 1980. So I and many of the people who have objected to this in the past 10 or 11 years have been living there before the greenhouse was built. 
Um, I want to say that the initial problem that started with all this was the initial applicant in 2006 who came down here and made promises to the staff, to you all, to the neighbor who lived across the street and other neighborhood people, and then didn't do it. And part of that was because what you've already heard today has been addressed. I have, I'm not a lawyer, um, but I will tell you that I do come with the authorization and the request from the Old Richmond Road Neighborhood Association, Mary Diane, who's the president and her board, uh, the, uh, the Boone Creek Neighborhood Association, uh, Melissa Brown that she's already mentioned, um, and the Fayette County Neighborhood Association. Um, they asked me to present these findings to you. Uh, a lawyer, I, I will say, no, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I didn't do these, but I will tell you that there are a lot in these two new, in these neighborhood associations. Um, in just Old Richmond Road, I think there are seven lawyers that belong there. In the Old Richmond Road, the street that this greenhouse is on, there are seven attorneys in that neighborhood association. Seven attorneys in the Old Richmond Road Neighborhood Association. If it's something you decide to grant, I would invite you to consider whether to clarify that this permit is granted to that individual, Mr. Wunderlich, not a corporation, and not the landowner. And if you think that is the case, I would invite you to consider a condition, an express condition, that the conditional use permit shall not transfer, but shall lapse if this owner's use of it lapses. Because even though we know variances run with the land, but conditional use permits don't, what I discovered in the art bar hearings was that unless the board specifically attaches a note that the permit shall lapse with the applicant's use of it, shall not transfer, it will transfer automatically. So that's something for you to consider. You are the discretionary body that reviews this matter, and I appreciate your service and uh, consideration for the neighbors and the work there. Um, as far as my uh, tax record with the city, you can get with uh, my accountants on that, best in the tariff. I've been up to date and current on my tax record. They do have 1099 employees. Uh, the greenhouse in my backyard and on my own personal property. Uh, the water usage uh, would actually be, re some of it would be reused similar to what uh, Food Chain Lex does with aquaponics. There's also been an existing engineering plan from Palmer Engineering uh, regarding a runoff, which was based on 3,700 uh, square feet of, of uh, pavement. I would have, I think, like 1,700, so it would be uh, significantly less than that. It would only be around 800 gallons. I'm Dustin of Dustin's Fish Tanks. Uh, everything I put into my uh, aquariums and things to grow plants are uh, fish tank safe, like fish live in it with them, so there should be no concern about the watershed because my own personal fish and the reason people tune into my YouTube channel is because I have aquariums with fish in them, so there's no like, you know, toxic anything going into the aquariums. Um, I have zero intention of cutting down trees. I'm a tree-loving individual. Uh, I all my aquariums, I, mean, I grow plants, that's my thing, so I don't have any intention of cutting down anything. Um, as far as the on-site septic system, I have spoken with the, I believe it's the Board of Health, and I don't believe that's required. I was going to use a uh, combustible toilet for that. Uh, and then, that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I forgot to ask you at the beginning of your original uh, remarks whether you uh, would agree to abide by the conditions recommended by staff in the staff report. Do you agree to abide by those if your uh, application is granted? Yes, I agree to abide by those. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I want to ask the staff, uh, in light of, the, uh, of all the testimony, that has been heard on this application so far. If there's anything they'd like to add to the staff report or anything that they've heard that would change their recommendation or alter uh, or, or in any way uh, amend the, uh, either the staff report or the conditions that they've recommended for approval. 
approval of this application. In response to the staff's concerns about the null and void condition when there's a substantial investment, two things. There's a real question about whether that substantial investment is in compliance and duly created or whether it's in fact an illegal non-conformity. Um, second, Mr. Wunderlich is here. He has presented a business plan, all the terms and conditions, what he's going to do. He's engaged to use this property in this way. The landowner is not present. He has made no assurances. There have been difficulties in the past with this landowner. I think it's right in this instance to say that our conditional use permit, if you choose to grant it, is with the applicant in his person because he's here and he's engaging to use the property in this way. Uh, along with the lady's last point, uh, I would like to have kind of an outline if there is going to be an approval, what any sort of things, um, you know, will need to be met. My uh, deal with the seller is contingent upon a, an approval of this. So if there's X, Y, and Z steps that need to be added to get this approved, uh, I, I would love to have those clearly outlined and what that takes because uh, my, my deal is basically null and void if this is not approved, so I would like to have that kind of outline. If this is going to happen, you're going to need X, Y, and Z done, so then I can go back to the seller and, and make good on all these conditions. Well, so the video is going to provide uh, uh, to screen this property from the neighbors, and so that in combined with, with the other uh, uh, conditions that uh, the staff has proposed, which are probably about twice as many to be imposed on any other uh, application for um, uh, conditional use uh, are probably sufficient to to make this property into a usable piece of property. I don't know what the outcome of this application is going to be, but my inclination myself is to uh, is to vote in favor of it. Uh, I'll. Uh, that being said, I'll entertain uh, the comments or a motion from uh, from the board. The board knows me well enough that I probably have my own opinions. Uh, so I might as well express them. In the first place, I, I appreciate what the applicant has done and I appreciate the, the ideas behind uh, I think I think the biggest problem that we all have to consider is that this the structure should not be there in the first place. Yeah. And that's what, no, 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 no. That's what the neighborhood is concerned about. And I understand that that came up last day. Um, and I think what a lot of us would like to do is get rid of it because it doesn't belong in the neighborhood we're at particularly. Uh, so if we, if, we can, if we say that the building should exist, that, that's one thing, but that's not something this board can do right now. Yeah. That's, not, that's not our purpose. It's not something we can do. But it, it just seems like to me that to, to approve the use as it's been suggested simply gives credibility to this building. And it, it is, it, even if, even in its proposed conditional use, would be an adverse impact on this neighborhood. And I feel that very strongly. And I, I see all the arguments pro and con. And, and frankly, I hate to say to the applicant that it's not good enough because I don't think I don't think the applicant has uh, is the problem here. The problem is the building, and it's in the wrong place. And it's, it's, it's improper. It should have never have been there in the first place. And uh, uh, the residents seem to think that, that it would be a better home site. I, I actually can't agree with that. Uh, if, you look at the, if you look at the map, you find that this is the, this, the most narrow part of, of that piece of land between Old Richmond Road and, and, and the interstate. It's probably not a good place for a, a resident. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I think it's, it, it's not a good use of this property. Magically, make the property, the building disappear. I think we'd all think that would probably be a good idea. But I would have to vote for voting against.
against this because I don't think it's appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Anybody else uh, have comments or suggestions? Uh, if, uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Way 1791 by Dustin Wunderlitz. Uh, I uh, move to deny the request for conditional use and the variance permit to establish a commercial greenhouse and variance to eliminate the required landscape easement in the agricultural rural AR zone at 7524 Old Richmond Road. Circle. Do you have grounds for your motion, Mr. Clark? Grounds for my motion is in inappropriate use in this particular site. Thank you, Mr. Clark. I'll hear a second.
request for the conditional use is not granted, the request for the variance is not granted. So the application itself fails. Imagine being me when you see a vote of a 3-2-3 three three tie after sitting through two hours of people fighting why you shouldn't have a greenhouse on this property. Do me a favor, folks. Drop me a comment on what you think about this situation. Oh, by the way, Brandon Gross is my neighbor up the street. He was not allowed to vote because he knew me. Next week, we find out how the greenhouse saga ends, folks. Drop me a comment. Hit the subscribe button, notification button. Love you. Talk to you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Tank on.